Here we're going to discuss creating a 3D dome environment to place your model within and then render it. So let's go ahead and begin. Let's go ahead and select render. We're going to select studio task. And notice we're already in advanced studio. If I select this off, we're out of it. If I select again, we are back in because you can see the shadows and you can see some of the shading and lighting that we created from before. So if we look over to the left, we have system scenes. So let's go ahead and select that in the resource bar. And we have three folders, indoor, outdoor, and studio. These will be the scenes that we'll be using in this video. Now before we begin, let's go back over to Advanced Studio Display and we'll find Face Edges. Go ahead and make sure that this is unchecked. Notice we took the lines off of our part model so that it will give it a much more realistic look when we render it. Let's go ahead and if we go to Scene Preferences and we have the Scene Preferences dialog, we go under Background and under st Settings Go ahead select environment. Now notice right away our background changed. This is kind of a default thing when we open up a 3D environment. It will select one of the ones by default from the folders that we saw over here within the resource bar. Now here we have dome type and if I use this drop down menu you'll notice that we have two different types. We have a finite and infinite. Right now we have infinite, and to show you what infinite is, is I'm going to go ahead and use my mouse, and I'm going to zoom out, and that we can see it tends to shrink our part, but it opens up the actual dome image. And if I turn this, we have an image that will go 360 degrees around, top and bottom. Now this is really good if you have such as a large vehicle or an airplane or something like that that you want to place within the scene and give it a realistic rendering look. Now if I switch to finite, notice I have to zoom all the way back in and now notice how much bigger my part is. And if you also notice within this dome type environment, when I move the part, the scene behind it moves with it. And I'm going to show you the difference between the two different types of scenes. Now this is a three-dimensional scene, which like I said earlier, you can turn 360 degrees. And you can see where you are within the dome. If I go ahead and say select a regular scene. Notice now I can move my part any which way I want and place it anywhere I want. And I can also zoom it in and zoom it out to give it perspective to where you want to place it, say, on this table here. Now when you're done placing your part, you can then go up to Ray Trace Studio, select on it, the Ray Trace Studio dialog will appear and it will begin running iterations for rendering. And again, if you select over on our quality drop down menu, see we have a photo reel, quality interactive, and fast interactive, which will give us different le levels of rendering. We can also do a static image and then we can save that out as a JPEG, a PNG, or a TIFF file. And here we have also the Ray Trace Studio preferences. But if we go ahead, and we can pause at any time, and then we continue to resume by pressing the play button. Now if I want to just basically get a quick static render image, I select on that, and once it's finished, I'll be able to save it by selecting the Save Image button, or if I don't like what I have, I can then erase it and start over again. And then, of course, once I click Save, I will get another dialog which will allow me to save the image 
and in the format that I choose either TIFF, PNG, or JPEG. And then I can also change the file name and place the saved image by selecting the browse button to place it in the folder I want to save it to. When you're all finished, go ahead, select close, and you can finish the studio and exit. You can then select advanced studio, and you can remove the background. And that is creating a 3D environment for your model to render.